If you're a filmmaker doing video interviews with multiple people or a podcaster with multiple hosts and guests all in the same space and you're picking up ambient noise or each other's voices in the microphones and it's making your post-production a nightmare, well, I've got a couple of simple solutions that may help you in your post-production to get rid of some of that noise right now. So let's go. What's up, Tubulars? Welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, this is a place where I help entrepreneurs like you get your creative endeavors elevated so that you can go do things that matter. So you should think about subscribing because this community is lit. And today, this is for the community and it's for anybody that's stopping by that has had an issue with what I'm talking about with all of that bleed into the microphones. Now, James Rose from the community. Again, James, this is for you and all of those out there having the same trouble. I have some beginner tutorial stuff going on here. I'm gonna bring you into my workflow. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna listen to what's happening and I'm gonna help you eliminate some of that noise. So for the advanced editors out there, this one may not be for you, but for the beginners, this is gonna help you with a place to start. And I got a couple solutions that we can work with. One that's very simple and you just kind of have to have a few tweaks, but there's a couple caveats. And another one that's a little bit more advanced, but it may also offer you some solution here. So I wanna give you at least a couple things to take away. I don't wanna to go too advanced. I may mention a couple of things. I'll link up some resources below. I wanna keep it simple, folks. Now, one of the things that we really need to start with before we even get the audio into our post-production is thinking about our pre-production. So everything that happens before the recording, and that has to do with using the right equipment. So in this example, I'm using a dynamic microphone that I typically use for podcasting. And it's great because I can tell you right now, my fan is blowing like crazy on my laptop because I got a lot of stuff happening and you probably are not really hearing it, and I'm in a very big space as well. So you may hear a little bit of echo unless I've edited it out. I'm trying to keep as much of this stuff raw as I can, but what I will say is that the equipment itself is a good place to start and research when it comes to what are you using it for and where are you gonna be using it. Another thing to also think about is not just the equipment, but how you're setting it up. So. In the examples that I'm gonna show you in here in my editors is a setup where we're using dynamic microphones. So my business partner and I, we were recording a podcast and I'm sitting like at one side of the table and she's sitting on the other end of the table or we may actually be in another space, but we're, we're trying to be apart from each other. So setting up the equipment so that it eliminates as many variables as possible of any kind of bleed. All right, so before we get into the workflow, I just wanna make sure if you need to pause, put on some headphones or make sure that you can hear what's happening, that you've got good like monitors on your desk or wherever you're watching this. And I always recommend that with editing, making sure that headphones or good monitors so that you can get your audio dialed in. All right, so we're, we've moved into GarageBand here. It's a very basic audio editor on Mac. And for Windows users out there, there could be a couple of options that I can link up for you. But what we have right now is me on track one, and then my business partner and co-host is on track two. And now I have her track uh, muted because what I want you to hear is the bleed that's occurring into my microphone. So she's talking, I'm not saying anything, and you'll hear her bleeding through. So let's actually listen to that. Wants the crap some people want and others don't. And you know, there's, I mean, the, the industry of organization. Okay, so you can hear that. You know, uh, and you can also see this in my track. Like videos. it's the levels are going up and that's not what you want. With me videos where people now what we're gonna be doing is applying a noise gate. Very beginner, very basic stuff. And, and like I said, I will follow up with a caveat with the noise gate, but what you do down here in GarageBand, don't worry about the EQ and compressor and stuff over here. We're gonna come over here to the effects and the track and there's a noise gate toggle. And what a noise gate will do is it opens and closes to allow certain sounds in depending on what threshold you set. So for instance, let's say that I wanna keep it closed. I wanna keep that gate closed for when she's bleeding into my mic. And the thing is, is like, those are like faint sounds. Those could be fans or environmental noise or her bleeding in. And so the gate's like 
yeah, like I, you know, like those are faint sounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep those closed. But hey, when you are talking, like that gate's coming open, like it's flying open, it's going to let you talk. And that's another thing to think about in your pre-production is to make sure that you're vocalizing directly into your microphone and that you're using your diaphragm and expanding, contracting and all of these things. And like, yeah, sitting up in your chair and so that you come through clearly, that all helps in your pre-production. But in certain interviews, like it's it's not perfect because people kind of move away from their microphones and they might move over here. They might kind of turn their head depending on the microphones that you're using. And that obviously plays a role. So let's apply the noise gate. So you'll see, and let me just open that up. So right now we'll play that back. You hear the bleed. The, the industry of We're going to toggle that because we want to manipulate that threshold. And actually at negative 38 uh, decibels, I mean, I probably could come up here a little bit and you don't really hear her. And you also, whoops, and you also do not um, see the vocal or at least the audio level in my track moving up and down. However, what we want to make sure is that the gate stays open for me. So here's a section where I'm talking. So what we'll make sure of, and I will turn this down because you can see the waveform is going to be kind of loud. So let's play that and make sure that the gate is open for me. Space. So, I mean, I think, especially with the internets, the way that they are today, like okay. I can check on so my So the gate is opening Amazon. up for me. Is that we have much easier access. So when you talk about retail therapy. Now, one of the caveats that I wanted to explain to you is that if you have a ton of noise in here and you literally like, let's say that you're recording your podcast at home and your kids like kind of yelling and running around and like in your face or in your microphone, you just need to sh shut the gate completely, <laughs> you know, but uh, all jokes aside, what you need to do is understand that there are some limitations here. So let's say that I thing, this organization. Want to continue to move that um, over? I mean, there are plenty of entrepreneurs that have started out. That's what they do. Because you hear the, how that's they, like cutting in and out? You become both physically and emotionally. Sounds terrible. like a terrible, like you're By losing stuff. somebody's cell, cell signal and they're, they're, they're cutting out on you. So what I just want you to be mindful of is that right now, like I'm talking into this microphone, there's some natural breaths. There's just some natural, you know, transition happening in between my vocalization. And I, I just don't think that you always are going for a situation where you have to sound like you're in a sound booth. Yes. Like quiet as much as possible, but not that you're literally in a recording booth and everything is like dampened. Try to find a happy medium between the two so that you're not getting all of that bleed, especially in that dead space. And so the garage band noise gate, the way this is set up, it's very basic because, I, and I will link some resources below, there are ways to actually make that noise gate a little bit easier to work with, not so much in GarageBand, but some other editors. But speaking of other editors, let's actually get into Logic Pro X. It's a little bit more advanced because I think that there's actually a better solution. If when you're ready to kind of step up, there is an expander solution and that will help eliminate some noise without that sort of cutting out of the voice. So let's move over there. Okay, so we are over here in Logic and we are gonna be using an expander effect or an expander plugin. One of the things that I also should have said before is that you're applying these effects to both or all of the channels because if she's bleeding into my microphone and you know I can talk and I can get my voice out there, I can project my voice, it's definitely picking up in her mic too. But for right now, we're just actually showing my track. So over here, I'm in track one and she's in track two. We've gone ahead and muted her. We don't have any noise gate or anything like that happening. Let's crank this up a little bit so that we can hear the bleed. So she's talking. I certainly have gone through periods in my life where I, I have had to buy. Okay, we have that bleed. We're gonna come over here. And so over in this section here, it's my track. So I'm applying it to my track. So you can see Kevin track one. I'm gonna come in here. We're gonna add an expander. Now, by default, every, all of this stuff comes up, so this is not a noise gate. This is not like opening and shutting like abruptly. What this is actually gonna allow me to do is eliminate some of the ambient noise. It's great, like I said, so like if you're working at home, like recording at home and there's like a lawnmower next door or like a fan in the room or something, like I said, pre-production is everything, but 
you know, again, like you, you can't get rid of all of it. Let's listen to the track here. I'm still muted. Or no, I'm sorry. She's still muted. Bring that up. Having a new baby, you have to buy all this equipment. And, you know, just as our income, so our adult incomes have we're going to bring that down. Certainly had more flexibility to and an expander actually works on, on ratios. I, I don't want to get too much in the science about that. I'll link that up. But what we're going to do is bring that down. It's getting less, right? I can still hear it a little bit. However, again, we've eliminated quite a bit. So let's move over to a section where I'm talking and, and let's like notice or take note that it doesn't sound like I'm cutting in and out like I'm losing like the cell phone. Like, hey, I gotta call you back. Delivered. Oh, it's still on the way, but it says it's running late. Okay. So it's my little online retail thing. I, I am, I'm waiting. Like I, I, I've got to do this review and I'm waiting for it to show up. It eliminates a lot of that echo that's bleeding into your microphone or that's bleeding into each other's microphones without actually having to go in and cut. Because like I said, we talk over each other. We're laughing along. It's a conversation. It's just natural. But what it does is it eliminates a lot of that extra noise that's entering into your microphone that you don't want entering in there. The noise gate, really the basic stuff, there are ways to actually do more advanced noise gate uh, editing, but GarageBand doesn't really have a lot to offer there, unfortunately. So again, just be very careful when you apply the noise gate. And if you're moving up to something more of an advanced editor, me personally, I would choose the expander over that because it allows some of that natural voice inflection to come through. I just think it just sounds a little bit better, a little bit more natural like conversation. I mean, you don't want it to be like too breathy and like too noisy, but it just, it takes the edge off a little bit. And I would recommend, I personally like to use the expander option. So anyway, if you have further questions or comments, I'm going to be linking some resources below to kind of help you along. This is just a starting place, beginners. It's a place to start when you're thinking like, I got this noise, like where do I start? These are two options to start with. I just want to get you there. We'll have more advanced editing on this channel, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you want to show back up for some more editing tips and tricks. Listen, folks, I appreciate each and every one of you being here. I appreciate your time and attention to everything that you're doing here. Definitely hit me up in that comment section because I just love hanging out with you. So hit me up in the comment section below. And as always, go out there and do things that matter. You go keep rocking those faces. I cannot wait to see you back right here on this channel for more info, tips, tutorials, stories, all the stuff that's happening. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will catch you on the very next one right here.